Hello all and welcome back to the channel. Now I'm no humanitarian, but the thing I hate second to wasting money is producing unnecessary e-waste. We live in an anti-repair, throwaway society and we're actively producing excessive amounts of electronic waste with no forward-thinking plan to address it. For more information on that, check out Lewis Rossman's YouTube channel for some great content on the anti-repair ways of modern companies. For this video, enter this TV. This is the LG 55UJ6300 55 inch 4K TV that I've had and loved for about 5 years now. This TV has been mounted in my bedroom for the duration of its life with its only purpose being to stream content, which it has done quite well. Recently, I decided to upgrade to a 65 inch TV in the bedroom and move this to a gaming room and that's where the problem presented itself. I'm embarrassed to say that my girlfriend and I did not notice that the TV had been turning blue until we moved it into the gaming room and saw it next to a laptop that was connected to it. In my light research I found that this appears to be a common issue with many of the LEDs installed in LG TVs. At any rate, in this video I'll show you how to go from this to this. Now if you're wondering if you have the skills or ability to perform this repair, I will share two thoughts. Number one. I had no idea what I was doing nor was there a teardown available for my TV online. Number two, the TV's already functionally broken. With that, let's get started. First off, let me preface that this is not a formal teardown of this specific TV model, but I will say modern smart TVs have very comparable components so while you may have to tinker a bit to figure out which screws to remove, I suspect that you'll find that the teardown is quite similar. Now, with the TV panel facing down, I'm going to remove all of the screws from the back panel of the TV. With all the screws removed, we can remove the back panel lifting from the bottom of the TV toward the top to relieve some retention clips. With the back panel off, we can get a look at some of the components. Here we have the two speakers, the power supply, and the TV's mainboard. The first thing I'll do is remove the speakers to get them out of the way. Next, I'll remove the IR receiver and unplug the ribbon cables going to the LCD panel. Next, I'll begin removing the screw securing the plastic chassis to the metal frame of the TV. Once that's done, I'll flip the panel over.
With the GV flipped over, I'll begin removing the plastic chassis by relieving a series of retention clips around the outside of the panel. Be careful as this part's a bit tedious. With that, I'll remove the retaining tape securing the darter boards for the LCD panel. Afterwards, I'll secure these darter boards to the panel with a bit of electrical tape. Be careful here as well, as the ribbon cables connecting the board to the panel are thin and brittle. Now, to remove the actual LED panel, I recommend using a pair of suction cups designed to remove TV panels. Since I don't have those, I did it the dumb way. Next, I'll remove a million more retention clips holding the diffusing panels to the metal assembly. Once that's removed, I'll remove the three diffusing panels from the assembly while being sure to note the order and orientation so I can easily reinstall. Now we're down to the LEDs and the reflector panel. My TV had a series of retention clips that just rotated out for removal. And now we're left with the LED strips as well as their light diffusers. These diffusers are glued in place so must be removed by force. I would advise you to save yours for reinstallation if your new LED strips didn't come with them pre-installed. You can use hot glue, super glue, or just about any other glue to secure these in place once the new strips are installed. Now, removing the reflective panel, we're left with just the LED strips adhered to the metal assembly. I'll quickly validate that I have the correct replacements before continuing. After toiling a bit in frustration, I learned the hard way that the cable supplying power to my LED strips is removed by pulling perpendicular to the plug, not horizontally. So, time to get the soldering hardware out for the new ones. Now, I've intentionally blurred this part out simply because I'm not good at soldering and don't need tens of YouTube viewers to tell me that. But apparently I'm not that bad because the LED strips still work.
So begins the tedious process of putting the TV back together. I'll secure the reflective panel, reinstall the diffusers, snap the front chassis back in place, carefully reinstall the LCD panel, put the screws back in place, reinstall the back plastic assembly, and that's it. With $30 in parts, this TV has been given a second lease on life while my e-waste impact has gone from this to this. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.